Hey everybody, welcome to day 61 of 90 of the 90 day video challenge, stepping into 2020 on the right foot. And here we are through with November. Today is December, December 1st. 1st. Advent begins today. Mm -hmm. It's the final month of the year. You have 30 more days after today to finish out the year strong. Today's already over. By the time they see this, they're at 30 days. I know. So. I'm pretty sure that's what I said, 30 days after today. Mm hmm So. Are you excited about the next 30 days? Uh, I think it's going to be an interesting 30 days. What will make it interesting? Well, there's just a lot to get done. There's a lot of things that have to play out. Um, it's Christmas season, so you know it's going to be stressful. Why would it be stressful? Christmas season is always stressful. Mm, I think that that's programming. I think it's wanting to do for others, and sometimes, for me anyway, when you try to do it on a limited budget, it creates stress. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Look at you trying to pretend like it doesn't bother you. No, it doesn't bother me. What bothers me is the procrastination of making plans until it's to the fever pitch of the whole family being in an uproar. Just say this is what's going on, this is what we're going to do, and then do it. It doesn't have to be stressful. Okay. But then again... I will admit, I like to control things. I like to say, I'm going to do the meal. I'm going to take care of the things. You just show up, and it'll be awesome. Yeah. So sometimes you got to let go of control. That's true. So, you know, we got plenty of things to work on here. <laughs> so uh, that's part of the deal. You know, no matter who you see, no matter who you take your advice from, uh, I promise you, they are fighting some of the same battles that you're fighting. So um, we can always give advice. It's always a lot harder to take our own advice. So I find it interesting. You know, we go to psychiatrists and psychologists and preachers and uh, motivational speakers, and we try to get all this information that will help us to move on to the next phase. But I promise you, when those people go home, they have the same battles that you have. I don't say that to discourage people from taking advice and seeking advice, but just be aware that, you know, people don't have it figured out. I mean, it's the same struggles no matter who you are. We are all human, and we are all um, imperfect beings. So We are also able to... As individual families, as blended families, we're able to set our expectations. So we didn't set expectations for quite a few years in our marriage of what is the holiday going to look like. And then we decided that we do want to be at our house on Christmas Day because we want our kids to have a tradition that is always theirs, that they can always come back to. And so I think that whenever you finally say, this is what we're going to do, that can come with its own stress. That can, because you've always done something different, but now you have to make a decision to continue your legacy in a way that you know that God's calling you to do it. And blended families have a little bit of a unique situation there. Most of the time, and not every time, I mean, I'm speaking in somewhat of a generality, most of the time, you were married before, you had a tradition, that marriage ended, and you had a time where you were single. And most of the time, in those single times, your holiday traditions vary somewhat. You end up going back to doing things with grandparents because they're available. It's just, it, every situation is different. And especially uh, for us, I mean, I know that we spent a lot of time doing things with grandparents around the holidays. Mm -hmm. And after we got married, that had become the norm. And it became sort of, how are we going to deal with this? And, you know, we tried to go from one place to another overnight. And it was confusing and it was difficult. And we finally said, hey, you know, we need to be setting 
these traditions for our kids, like you said. We have to have something as a family that's going to be us. Uh, and some years Thomas is with us, some years he is not. And so regardless of that fact, we continue to do what we have said is going to be the tradition for our family. So let me encourage you to sit down with your spouse and decide what your holiday season is going to look like. Are you going to do both families? Are you going to do one family? Are you going to do it at your place? Are you going to do Thanksgiving one place and Christmas another? However that looks for you, if you work it out ahead of time, it certainly makes a lot less stress when it comes time to actually have the holiday. Mm -hmm. And once you do sit down together and you talk about that, then you need to be one unit whenever you are talking to your families about it. Because just like your kids, your families can try to get their way and pull you apart without realizing what it is that they're doing. And not, they're not doing it on purpose. And they're not. Just like your kids, they want their way. Your families want their way. And sometimes you have to say, this is what we know we're being called to do. Yeah. So the holiday season is upon us. We started Advent today, 24 mm -hmm. days of waiting, waiting for the Messiah. So uh, I don't know if you celebrate Advent. We don't make a huge deal of it here. Uh, but we do know that it's Advent season, and we talk about it. Um, so, I think it'll be interesting because you and I have both stayed pretty much day for day on our Bible through the year mm -hmm. in the chronological. And so I just sent out the request for the family to do Advent together. So we're going to be doing the Advent part of it. And then we're also going to be going through Revelation this month. So I think that will be interesting to be going through those two different topics at the same time. Mm -hmm. Revelation, I think, is the last four days of the year. Yeah. So I was looking through trying to go, man, we've got a lot of New Testament still to go through, and mm -hmm. we're 30 days from being done. So uh, it gets hot and heavy here for the last four weeks. So that'll be fun. But uh, let's see. Had a great church service this morning. Uh, Levi Lusco was the guest preacher, uh, and he's one of our favorites. We enjoy listening to him. Uh, he brought a good word this morning about the holding pattern. What do we do whenever we feel like we are stuck in a holding pattern? And so uh, it was good, and I was encouraged. Uh, I can see some areas in my life where I feel like I'm in a holding pattern, although I don't necessarily believe that I'm there. Um, it certainly can feel like it at times. Mm -hmm. It's a good reminder to not be trying to figure out what you need to do once you get out of the holding pattern. Just figure out what you're supposed to learn while you're in it. Yeah, and do do what you have. Use yeah. what you have. You know, you don't always have to have something else in order to do better or be better. Uh, but do do what you have. Yeah, I liked where, and I'm not able to see today where. He said that if you give God what's in your hand, he will unlock what's in your heart. Mm -hmm. That was really good. So uh, he brought the, the, uh, the word today out of Acts chapter 9, mm -hmm. uh, where he talks about Dorcas. Tabitha or Dorcas. <laughs> I'd like to have that name. Hey, Dorcas. That, that young lady probably had a hard time in middle school. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, but anyway. What a great story it is uh, to know that God works things out in a specific way at a specific time. We talk about Acts chapter 9 where um, Peter came to Joppa to, to deal with the situation with Dorcas. Tabitha, I gotta call her Tabitha. I can't say Dorcas. It's too, it's too difficult. I got too much junior high boy in me to, to do that. But if Peter hadn't been there and been part of that miracle, and been part of preaching the word after that, he wouldn't have been there when Cornelius had the vision and sent his men to Joppa to get Peter to come uh, and bring the message of Jesus to the Gentiles. So um, even though we don't see it, because we don't see the ending, God is always working out things to bring us to where we need to be in the season that we're supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. So, 
There you go. That's my take on today, on today's message anyway. Yeah, and I thought it was um, a little foreshadowing for Lauren for the end of the week because she'll be taking her first flight. And so talking about that holding pattern once you get there, you know, you got to wait until you're given the okay to land. So that'll be interesting. It won't be, hopefully, it won't be like Reagan and I flying into Baltimore because that is a short runway and a short landing strip. So haven't flown into North Carolina, so we'll see what that is. Yeah. Well, Jaden and Allison left us today as well. They made it back to Dallas safely, and it sure was good to see them both. Uh, they're looking good. They're feeling good. And so uh, it was good to have everybody together. So, all right. That's it for day 61. We're going to be on to day 62 tomorrow. Uh, we'll be continuing in our 40-day prayer challenge. We're going to be on day 25 of Prophetic Voice. So if you're not caught up, you still have a few hours to get up to day 25. And we will see you tomorrow, day 61. You guys have a great... Day 62. Oh, day 62. Today's 61. Yeah. So we'll see you guys tomorrow, day 62.